Thank you so much for attend. Oh, there we go. Thank you so much for attending this evening, for listening in via any one of WAMC's hundreds of far-flung radio stations, and for tuning in online, no matter where on the planet we find you. Have a very bad day. Chilling. Anger, shock, fear. Among all human facial expressions, that of joy was the most fleeting, the most impermanent, and Dale had yet to capture it, despite a basement freezer full of faces. Listen closely. Julius, a leading expert in the field of nanoacoustics, had labored for five years to perfect what, in effect, was the world's smallest and most sensitive microphone. And today, for the first time, he would focus it upon a petri dish with hope of listening in on bacteria. What he heard was what every E. coli in town seemed to know already, that his wife Elaine was carrying on an affair with his research assistant, Otis. Miss Carriage. Although she could not remember bringing a single one home, chastity could no longer ignore her now impassable den with its rush hour traffic jam of hodgepodge baby carriages, strollers, prams, joggers, some simple, others elaborate, but how and when had she collected so many? A more serious question still then crossed her mind. What, chastity wondered, what had she done with all of those babies? They get a lot more upbeat, just hang in there. Abandon. It had taken some time, but in due course, Boston had begun to make love to his neighbor, Glynis. For after all, his wife, Judith, had left him to buy groceries, as it turns out. Nicked. He was hired as Jimbo, the alligator sh at the alligator show, and in three short weeks, his skill with the reptiles, despite having come aboard as a novice, had earned him top billing as Gator Jim. Before month's end, he was laid off, which was unfortunate, but he did leave with a new nickname, Stumpy, which he had to admit now fit him really well. Resolute. While scoring more crack next year was certainly a goal, Valerie suspected that it was not an appropriate New Year's resolution. For one, it lacked any suggestion of a mechanism for acquiring said crack, like getting a job, and also absent were any note of self-sacrifice and spirit of self-improvement that all worthwhile resolutions should be imbued with. She would have to try again. I will do less crack next year somehow that just didn't sound right either thank you for the crack addict that was laughing thank you <laughs> maternalia celia's heart was warmed when jesse took her aside to tell her that she was like a mother to him but he neglected to tell her that he had in 2005 committed matricide in order to collect the thousand dollars worth of burial insurance which he instead spent on Colt 45, lottery tickets, and cigarettes. Will Way. Felicity was having one of those days. Woefully, she also had a chemical weapons stockpile. Hard talk. Lost among the many fine print warnings on the erectile dysfunction medications label was this. The continued use of Priapol may cause lasting painful erections and may cause the user to spontaneously begin to speak only in Portuguese. On the Newark to Lisbon flight, the mostly male passengers chattered amongst themselves and shifted uncomfortably in their seats. Members only. Lucinda had no idea that a man could fit his private part in there, no less leave it behind 
for her to discover some weeks later. Detour. Mind pictures. <laughs> Josephine put pen to paper, firmly committed to memorializing nothing but the amicable and happy moments of her life. Suddenly peckish, she made her roundabout way to the refrigerator, carefully avoiding a path through the living room where the bodies of her family lay, as they always had a way of bringing her down. Today's lesson. Aiden had overslept again this morning, so in last straw retribution, Brittany drew a dick on his head with permanent marker, woke him up, and kicked his ass out of the house to catch the school bus for his first day of kindergarten. Oh. Bad bet. Two days, four hours, 13 minutes. It was a good thing that the casino never closed. But how long could it take, thought Mona, for a gentleman friend to return from the restroom? Make way. Milton's prostate, diagnosed as enlarged, had also become quite enraged and was no longer content to block only his urine flow. Expressing newfound ambition, it was now blocking traffic leading to the Lincoln Tunnel. That's quite a prostate. Do the jerk. Her dance moves had become erratic and her expression vacant. If Clarence didn't know any better, he would have thought Ida was having some kind of perhaps epileptic fit. While he thought to investigate further into her condition, he left the party instead, as he knew nothing about girls and wasn't about to learn now. A short play. Please tell me there wasn't a baby in there. Parting is. Mildred was sure that Leroy had infirm, affirmed that he would meet her on Barracuda Point Beach near sunset, 6 p.m. sharp. So far, disappointingly, she had only found one of his legs. Two each. Johann described to Emma, in refreshingly few words, the basics of particle physics. Emma informed him that she was not wearing any underwear. Thin premise. Unhappy with her body, and after many attempts at weight loss, Carney decided to stop eating meat. In short order, she began reposting self-righteous, militant, vegan, meat is murder memes. She became so angry and subsequently hungry that she ordered jellied panda face from Amazon Prime. Upon taking delivery, she was arrested, deported, and imprisoned in a far-flung region of China. As her captors served only gruel, she became vegan again thereby shedding 49 pounds. And now, chained to a rock in the open sun, she also looked very hot. Maybe. Millicent's favorite restaurant, more than a bit too expensive, a table on the patio where she could be serenaded by the gently overlapping breakers, her favorite bottle of champagne, served just as she liked it, a bit too chilled, and a dozen Blue Point oysters from Long Island Sound, as gentle as her smile. It was their anniversary, and next year, mused Russell, he might just bring her along. Personal preferences. With his free hand, Charlie tapped in the characters of his personals entry and hit send. Single white male, 32, with gun in mouth, seeks the right gal to pull the trigger. Blonde, single white female, 18 to 24, petite but shapely preferred, Jennifer Aniston type. No smokers, drugs, drinking fatties, skinnies, religious types, hippies, emos, yoga or goth chicks, hang-ups, weirdos, or baggage. Lighthouse work. Grace's mom had spared the rod. Unfortunately, she had also spared the washing machine, iron, refrigerator, and oven. Anyone's guess? It may be 
impossible, given current technologies, to count something precisely as in the number of stars in the firmament or grains of sand in the Sahara. But that does not mean, of course, that there's a never-ending or infinite amount of stars and sand. A sober, scientific, and earnest, but unsettlingly vague response from Denise, who simply could not give a straight answer to Mason when asked if she could remember how many lovers she had taken before meeting him. Donnie. Vernon flipped the light switch, and before it could extinguish time, despite the universal law that governs it, paused just long enough for him to realize that Melanie's friend Bernard, with whom she was spending another weekend away, didn't seem at all gay. Beat it. Sixty percent of American women surveyed masturbate twice weekly. Laverne thought this preposterous, and furthermore, that Time magazine was no place for such unnecessarily salacious content. She decided to unleash the resulting umbrage at her husband Egbert when he returned from one of his vexingly frequent trips to the restroom. Laverne continued to read the already offending article. One in four men, according to the same study, is masturbating right now. What nerve. Brennan hated the languages and food of other cultures and was unafraid to let anyone know about it. He hoped, in fact, to share his point of view with supermodel Helga Lunas and to let her know that he could never tolerate her consuming sushi or even ordering it in his presence. Brennan's plan to use a wingsuit to fly onto her apartment's terrace from the vantage point of a nearby office tower to deliver his message was thwarted, however, by his fears of heights, wingsuits, flying, office towers, terraces, and supermodels. Unbearable. Without the depth to appreciate women close in age to himself, Rupert instead fixed his interest upon Tiffany, whose tautness and charms were the unearned dividends of her evident youth. Unfortunately, Tiffany was actually Martha, whose many reparative surgeries had stayed both the hands of time and the pull of gravity. Tonight would be their first date, and if all went well, it would also be their last, as anyone who sees her unclothed body must die. Family way. Someone dated her, right? That's a sound. Um, in 2011, learning to set traps for a wild boar, Herbie was rent asunder by one of the beasts. In 2012, Mandy met an untimely demise when her overalls became entangled in the shaft of the manure spreader. More recently, Jeremy was effectively liquefied while trying his hand at bronze smelting. Undeterred by their deaths at six, five, and four years of age, respectively, the Hendersons, ardent proponents of homeschooling, began adoption proceedings for three new, hopefully far more fortunate, children. Remote learned. Bram Stoker had never ventured as far as the Carpathian Mountains and yet was revered for writing about them with dark eloquence in his classic Dracula. Ray Bradbury had created his important Martian Chronicles without, of course, ever being transported to that faraway planet. So why, thought Carl, all the hullabaloo over his having penned mere prescriptions for Percocet, Clonopin, and Vicodin without the formality of having stepped foot in medical school? Prone. Ilion had lost his first wife, Esther, in Indonesia to the ravages of the 2004 tsunami. In 2011, near Tuscaloosa, his second wife, Marvella, met her fate in the hideous swirl of the great tornado. Now, with searing lava flow bearing down on the little Hawaiian village of Paloha, Ilion feared for the life of his third wife, Trish, he also feared that he might not have enough frequent flyers miles left to get her there. 
didn't you got, add up. You got to save when you can. Charles made the observation today that when he encountered a grouping of five objects, he initially saw them as two sets. One with three and the other with two objects. Only when he mentally added them together would they make the total of five. Compounding that revelation was this perplexing mystery. How did those severed fingers, no matter the number, end up in his mailbox? And on a Sunday, no less, when there was no scheduled mail delivery. Fine print. What at first had, was a terrible personal tragedy had now become a mystery as well. Lisa had checked all the adverse reactions indicated on all of her doctor-prescribed herbal and homeopathic menopause medications, and not one of them listed murdering and dividing up the part body of your husband as a side effect. Instant karma. Dalip just couldn't understand why trouble seemed to follow him wherever he went. He ran, flaming torch in hand, through the darkened fuel depot to find the answer. Prognosis. The operation was over. Shanice was about to wake from the anesthesia, and her chance for survival, despite the unforeseen complications, would have to be considered excellent. So you could say that it had all gone well if you were to overlook the fact that she had not okayed the admittedly altogether unnecessary procedure and that Darnell, despite his best intentions and evident natural talents, was not a surgeon of any kind. One for the road. Olive was a glass half-empty gal and her husband Morris was decidedly glass half-full. She had recently begun an affair with Pete whom she met through friends at work. He, well, he didn't even know there was a glass. To have and to hold. Oh, Jenny, oh, Jenny, what was it that drew me to you? What was it that put me under your spell? What was it that has kept me with you here, lo, these many years? And then Lawrence remembered in just that order. The misleading Craigslist ad, the drugged cocktail, and the filthy cage in Jenny's basement. Cut short. Oh my God, Norma. I'll get to it tomorrow. You act like it's the end of the... Thank you, everybody.